All right, good morning. We are live. As always, just let me know uh, that you can hear me, that you can see me. We'll get started in about two minutes, give people some time to sign on. Today's public Q&A, welcome to Garden Grounds, of course. Today's Q&A is anything on gardening, as always. Just throw out your questions. I'll be glad to answer them. A lot of people come in. I can't answer all of them. I'll stay on for uh, a good 45 minutes, try and answer as many as I can. If you want to throw out a super chat or something like that, I will answer that with some priority. But otherwise, I will try and go through all the questions and give you my best answer. We're going to talk a little bit about garlic. It's garlic planting time. And we will get started you know, in a minute or so. I do have a new book that's coming out behind me, uh, Growing an Edible Landscape. It is out officially November 28th. A little bit of a delay from November 4th, but it will be out. And you can find that anywhere, certainly at Amazon or any place. And I have a my first book, which is called um, The Modern Homestead Garden. So I will save my little blurb on garlic for once more people join. But certainly, throw out your questions now. Let's get started. It can be on garlic. It can be on anything really related to vegetable gardening. I'm going to just set up the chat here so that I can see everything nicely. And I will uh, answer questions in order. Oh, and the other thing is please uh, put in front of your question the word question. This way I can pick it out of the chat much more easily. All right, and I'm just checking things out here. So the chat is set up for subscribers only. So that will help kind of um, filter out people that are just jumping on. You do have to subscribe. So this is a public q and A. I I do this every second uh, Thursday, and every second and fourth Thursday of the month at 11 o'clock. And they are pre-scheduled. You can find them always for about 45 minutes or for an hour. If you like this setup, I do have public, I'm sorry, I do have private memberships. You can go to my YouTube channel, find the join button, and I do four or five of these uh, mentoring Q&As every month for about an hour. Much smaller group. I answer everybody's questions. It's a nice kind of tight-knit community that we're forming. I also do two um, classrooms, depending on which membership you pick, that really focuses on a specific topic for that month. And then I also have the Grow As We Grow series where people can send me video questions or tours of their video or tours of their gardens. And I put them together in a video called Grow As We Grow and I launch that once a month. All right, so let's get started from Christina. I, If I move during the winter, can I dig up my garlic and put them in a pot to bring them to a new home? Uh, you could actually because what you're doing now with garlic is we're getting it into the ground to get established, set up a nice root system. It also needs a cold period, which I'll be talking about when more people show up. And it just sets up a root system. It's sort of dormant, waiting for the spring. So you could dig it out. I would just dig up as much as you can, get down below it too, so you get the roots. And do with it as you wish. You can stick it into a container. You can grow it there in a container. They will grow nicely in containers. Um, you could replant them too if you have time. Darlene, question about winter cover for the green stalks. You mentioned plastic bags. So I don't personally, I'm in Maryland zone seven. We get freezing winters. I leave my green stalks uncovered. I've had one for seven or eight years now. Hasn't cracked, doesn't it really hasn't faded a whole lot. It's kind of, you know, got seven years worth of dirt and grime on it, but it looks good. You can put, if you go to like the big box stores and you get the 55 gallon leaf bags that are clear, 
or you can get ones that are solid colored like the dark green. You can put them over your tower. They go down pretty far, most cover it all. If it's not enough, you take one bag, you put it on top of your tower, any vertical tower it works, not just the green stalk. Cut you know, a hole in the top, slide that piece down, put another one over it, and you just kind of tape them together and you can cover the whole thing. Why might you do that? I mean, maybe with the clear bags, you want to keep some warmth in there, keep your cool crops growing a little bit longer, or you just want to cover them. You know, nothing much is in there. You want to protect them from the sun, all that kind of stuff. Either way, it's up to you, but it's just the basic 55 gallon uh, leaf bags, which are usually clear, or sometimes the bags that are used for like trash and stuff like that for, at an industrial site, 55 gallon. Laverne, I have an aspar I have an asparagus bed. I water, 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 but when I stick my finger in the soil, it's dry. What is the issue and how do I correct it? Well, I don't know. Um, I mean, you would start with like if your soil's like sand, it's draining pretty fast. If you're watering it and the top is dry at finger depth, doesn't mean that there's not a lot of moisture down below and your asparagus roots go down pretty far. So you might have an issue where the top is drying quicker. And the way you would handle that is to put down like shredded hardwood mulch or any kind of mulch that covers the top, helps keep the moisture in, and this way the top doesn't dry as quick. But unless you have like really sandy soil, I would bet there's enough water down at the bottom and you're good. But if you're concerned about the top drying out, um, two inches of mulch across the top asparagus can pop through that and that's one way and I've talked about that a lot in videos that by putting down a mulch you keep moisture in that top two four inches of soil which is great for surface roots Heather uh, question hold on part of it's blocked give me a second Question, can you explain what anaerobic means in compost? Um, I think so. <laughs> Sometimes I get things backwards. But aerobic is just like when we exercise, we're sucking in, we get a lot of oxygen. You want oxygen throughout your compost pile to help the good bacteria thrive and grow, keep things smelling pleasant. When you get an anaerobic, means lack of oxygen, like when you pile in just fresh grass and then after a day or two it heats up and then it begins to smell it compacts there's not a lot of oxygen all these different bacteria come in that create an odor and it can be problematic um, if you have like if you're making compost tea and you've got compost and water it smells great for the first day or two but then after four or five six days it can smell horrible because this anaerobic process is happening and there's no oxygen in the water. So when you're making compost teas and stuff like that, people put in an air stone to bubble oxygen through it and that helps all the good bacteria thrive and grow. Oxygen's basically equated with good bacteria, good microbes, pleasant smell, healthy, safe, and good. Anaerobic is equated with lack of oxygen, smells bad, bad microbes. Hopefully that made sense. Laverne, where do you where to find elephant garlic local in Maryland, Baltimore? It's hard to find. You, you know, I it's not technically a garlic anyway. Um, I've tried growing it before. Nothing spectacular happened, but you really just can look in grocery stores. Organic, not organic, doesn't matter. You're looking for the garlic, elephant garlic in there, and you can plant that. Um, you can also get your garlic from organic stores and plant it. Ashley, why haven't my beets formed heads yet or roots, only foliage? Should I have planted them deeper? Is it a nutrient issue? I planted them in several different areas, raised beds and grow bags. So they can be slow to form. Um, like I planted beets in the spring. They started forming really not until June. And then they've taken off and some of them are like a pound. And they've actually lasted all, all summer and I'm still eating them. If you just put them into the ground, they can just be slow. I don't really think that it's a nutrient issue. If you're in doubt, you know, give them any water-soluble fertilizer with NP and K represented. 
that should be good. But sometimes you just have to wait a while for it. Um, and it can take, I mean, it can sprout and it can be four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks before you get the beet. It just depends. Temperature matters, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I don't think that you're doing anything wrong. You've got them in beds and you've got them in grow bags, which makes me think it's just a matter of uh, temperature and just waiting really on them. The other thing that you can do is if you're planting the same variety of beet and it's not doing what you want this year, well, this winter, start looking for beets that maybe mature a little bit more quickly and see how that goes. Uh, let's see. Garden dogs. I brought my pepper plants inside to overwinter and the leaves are curling and falling off. So uh, overwintering peppers is, are di is difficult. And if you've dug up the peppers, you've moved them, they're probably in shock, the leaves fall off. The only thing you're doing when you're trying to overwinter peppers is have green stems and living roots. And then they kind of chug along. In the house, they should grow leaves back. They might get small. I mean, they might be small. They might grow. If you, like over winter where it's 40 or 50 degrees in a garage, but to get sunlight, sometimes you don't get leaves. Anyway, you're just trying to get that pepper to survive. And then you plant it, plant it out in the ground, you know, come spring, and it gets a jump to transplants. But it's pretty stressful for a pepper to go from inside from outside to inside and that's why it drops its leaves do not water it either if you've watered it the soil's moist leave it alone it's real easy to smother your plants that you bring inside with too much water that are supposed to be dormant because the water doesn't evaporate like it does outdoors it doesn't drain like it does it fills the pockets of air sometimes with too much moisture or water and the plants can die off Yes, yeah, so Heather, that's why you're turning your um, compost pile. As it heats up, if you're doing hot compost, or it condenses, the air pockets go away, and then you flip it over, you fluff it up, you get oxygen in there, and that sort of reignites all your microbes. Hello, Connie. Laurie, I haven't grown black tea plants. Um, it would be interesting. I don't know if they would do well in Maryland not, but I have not grown them yet. All right, so let's talk uh, real quick about garlic. So there's two types of garlic. Um, and I just did a uh, perk membership class on this this weekend. So this is what hardneck garlic looks like. This is, first of all, this is a bulb right here. And if you break off the piece here, that's a clove, and you end up with this. And this is what we plant, as we plant the garlic clove. So you have the bulb. If the stem right here is like a lollipop stick, really solid, you can't break it. You know, it is just solid. If you open this up and you take it out, you'll see a stick right down the middle, solid. You can't really snap it. This is hard neck garlic. Soft neck garlic looks the same. However, there's no hard stem down the middle like this. It's all soft, and I don't want to get this on my keyboard, but if you peel it away and press on it, you'll find that it just shreds away. So that stem is soft. You have your soft neck, and then you have your hard neck garlic. And you really have two types. For garlic to be successful, you when you pull it off, pull it out, you got the top, you got the bottom here are the roots. That's the roots. You want to plant it, generally speaking, two to three inches in depth. Nice loose soil to a depth of six or eight inches. You can plant these close together, four inches, six inches, eight inches. I recommend six inches if you want to form bigger bulbs of garlic. If you're not sure, just plant it on its side. The clove will work it out. You can throw in some organic granular fertilizer, prep the soil. If you have compost, that's the best, but you want a nice, loose, draining soil, and that will get you set up. You do want to plant it in the fall. Garlic needs a good four weeks to eight weeks of a cold period called vernalization, and that means it has to sit, the cloves have to sit at 32 to 50 degrees, 
for four to eight weeks. And it basically sends a signal to the little clove. You've gotten your cold period. And then when it warms up and you're growing in the spring, you're going to make a nice big bulb of garlic. So you need that cold period. And we'll get back to that in a second. Uh, Marina, can I and make sure you guys, you put questions in front to um, just let me know that you have a question. If not, I'm going to probably maybe pass it because I'm looking for the word question. Can I add eggshells from boiled eggs to the compost? You can add as many eggshells as you want. Big eggshells, if you just crush them with your hand and throw them in a compost pile, it's going to take years to break down. So I have a video on this. I do like to pulverize my eggshells in a um, coffee grinder, sprinkle that right into my garden beds. That ensures that you have calcium there or I throw a teaspoon, tablespoon into a planting hole if I'm growing tomatoes. But you can, you just really wanna shred up the eggshells as much as you can. If you're just gonna put them in compost, which is fine, just crush them up. And what happens is you just keep doing that for years and then the old eggshells break down, the new eggshells still have to break down. But the idea is that if you're just, you know, happy with making compost, crunch up the eggshells, let them do their thing. But if you need it more quickly, for some reason, if you need calcium faster, you want to pulverize it. When you pulverize it, it's smaller particles, more surface area, bacteria, microbes break it down quicker, and it changes to a form your plants can use right away. Sylvia, my garlic is rotting. I have it in containers. Um, if it's rotting, it's probably sitting in water too much and you might want to start again. Garlic is really hardy. Um, you only, if, if you're putting it in now, to be honest with you, you set it up, you put it in, water it in once, maybe water soluble fertilizer. If you skip the water soluble, we'll do that in the spring. If you want to follow me, I'll show you how to tend it in the spring and take care of it. But water at once and just let it go, you know? And with the cool temperatures coming and stuff, you don't need a lot of water in there. Karen, how would asparagus do next to a concrete wall in a corner? They would get sun from the east and south part of the day. Well, they, they can take some shade, but I mean, in saying that, you wanna make sure you're getting at least six hours. And while I think you will get asparagus coming up to harvest and stuff like that um, you have to let it grow after you harvest some of it and it's gonna get four or five feet tall and it needs a lot of sun energy to replenish and, and strengthen the roots so that you get a crop the next year and um, the asparagus is a perennial so as long as you feel like it's gonna get enough sun to recharge I think you'll be okay Julie, question, should I be concerned that my self-neck is sprouting already? Did I plant it too soon? Frost date is October 31st, planted three weeks ago. Well, I was gonna talk about that um, in a little bit, but we'll just, we'll do that part now. So when you put your garlic in, you can put it in as long as your soil can be worked, you know? So you're putting it down two to three inches. If you live in an area where the freeze comes and it might go below where you plant the garlic, you can add two or three inches of um, why did I forget the word <laughs> of mulch? <laughs> yeah, hay, leaves, whatever, top of the soil that will help insulate it, keep it from freezing. Now, garlic can freeze through a little bit, that's fine, but you don't want to prolong frozen clove of garlic in your ground. So, we put the comp, we put the uh, mulch down to keep it warmer. That being said, if you put in your garlic in October, November, or December, it is going to take off. That's why I was concerned about the person whose garlic is rotting. That just typically doesn't happen. So it's probably overwatering. It's going to grow greenery. Just ignore the greenery for the fall and winter. It's going to get beat up. It's going to grow. It's going to be big if you want. You can cut it, chop it up, use it in scrambled eggs or something. It tastes really good. That is just early growth. Don't need to do anything about it. It will get beat up, like I said. Come spring, new growth will come. That's at least telling you your clove is established. It has a root system. It knows what to do. When the cold comes, it'll stop growing. 
and it'll be ready for the spring. So to answer your question, don't worry about it. Darlene, if you planted hybrid or dwarf plants for healthy reasons, does the plant lose nutrients when you grow hybrids or dwarf varieties? Let me just think about that question. No. So a hybrid is perfectly normal, first of all. People get that confused with a GMO, which is a whole other subject. Hybrid just means somebody took the pollen of one variety of tomato and crossed it with another variety of tomato. And bees do that, nature does that, or people can do that. You're not going to get anything less with less nutrients. You might get something that's been hybridized to get more lycopene or hybridized to have more sugars. So it's just going to be a different plant. It's not going to be any worse. Could be better. It just depends on what you're buying. Sean, question on potatoes. How do you just store them so you can plant them for next year? So some potato varieties don't store as well, but you take them out of the ground. You usually give them a drying period. I let them dry it on the ground for a couple of days then I put them in a drying station and you let them dry. However, it can be hard because humidity is different everywhere. You bring them inside, your house stays at a set temperature. They can stay there. Some of them are going to um, kind of get moldy and die off if you're not refrigerating them. A lot of people put them into a root cellar where it stays like 50 degrees, it's cooler. The potatoes last, they sometimes sprout, but they're in good enough shape. So it's a little bit difficult to do. I would recommend, you know, bringing them inside, um, maybe keep them in a refrigerator. It's not going to hurt them, but there's a chance that they're, they're going to rot. Christina, can I plant garlic now in smart pots? Leave them in an unheated greenhouse for winter zone six. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, garlic is pretty solid. Again, after you put them into a container, you don't have to keep watering it. Water it in once, make sure it, the soil is moist. With the winter, it's gonna probably stay moist. Um, unheated greenhouse is totally fine. Coco, hi all, the alfalfa pellet video you did yesterday. Can you use the pellets for greens to do traditional hot composting too? Yes. So if you haven't seen that video, you get alfalfa pellets, you put water in there, they rehydrate, they become little fine particles. You can use that as your green. So you could do greens, hydrate the particles of alfalfa with leaves, and you can mix that together. That will help with hot composting. You can add the alfalfa into a compost pile to help jump start it if you wanted to get heated. That video just focused on, you know, if you didn't have a lot of resources, um, like I do, you get wood pellets, you get alfalfa pellets, you mix them together, you put them in a tumbler, and you can make really good compost. And it is, you know, it's not a perfect replacement for peat moss, but because of the wood, it's a little more fibrous, and it's a good alternative to peat moss. So it does make a nice, um, container mix. Not straight, you got to cut it with some other stuff, but you can use alfalfa as a green in anything that you want. J Bay, I have some cloves in the fridge for a month. Would they still be good to plant? So you guys are like kind of reading my mind. So the next step is most of the time, so hardneck garlic needs, I think, a good six or eight weeks of that cold period. I like to plant it um, in the fall, it survives here over winter, does really good. Soft neck garlic still needs a cold period, you know, at least four weeks. And you can put it in, an, in, you could put it in the ground in the fall here in Maryland. I've done experiments where I've put it out in March and it still gets that four, uh, 32 to 50 degree temps through March and through April. If you're stuck for some reason, you can give the cold period you can create the cold period using your refrigerator because your refrigerator sits between 32 and 50 degrees. You can just break your bulb up into cloves, put it in a Ziploc bag. Um, maybe you don't want it to dry out, so put maybe a damp paper towel in a Ziploc bag. Let it sit in there at least four weeks, you know, but if you can get it to six weeks or eight weeks, that's fine. 
and then you can go ahead and plant that. Maybe if you have frozen ground and you can't plant it in the spring, you want to start putting in your garlic into the refrigerator, um, say in April, I'm sorry, let's just say in March. Maybe your ground is frozen in March, your ground is frozen in April, and then it gets really warm quickly. So you're creating that cold period by just using your refrigerator. So you can get a late start on garlic and plant it next year. The difference would be is the garlic that cloves that you put in in the fall really do establish great root systems and they're going to be ready to go and they're going to pull in nutrients and they're going to be a little bit bigger and healthier but putting it you know a clove in the ground in the spring still does work. All right, WDX, I'm glad you uh, had a bumper of chilies. Peppers are one of the easiest things to grow here in Maryland. You do have to manage disease every once in a while, but if you kind of get the routine down, I mean, I have more peppers, you know, than I need. And every garden will be different, like different zones will have different plants that just have less disease pressure and pest pressure. Like, I might be like, peppers are the easiest thing to grow. Well, they are in my garden in Maryland. But that doesn't mean it translates well to Georgia or Texas or, you know, Iowa or something like that. So every garden's a little bit different. Uh, garden dogs. I planted garlic, but I don't see many greens sprouting up. Is that okay if they don't? Yeah, you know. I mean, we're assuming your garlic is okay. If you see some green, then it's okay. You know, you've got garlic that's working. There's a chance that something rots. Sometimes wireworms can come in and chew it down. That's usually in the spring. You don't have to worry much about stuff that you're putting in the ground when it's cool. But it doesn't have to have the greenery to mean, you know, for it to grow. In fact, if you put in your cloves, like say, I can probably put some in in December. If I put them in in December, when I can still work the soil, but it's just cold, I'm not going to get any green growth at all. Asia, can I create a small, and you guys make sure, um, just put question in front of your question so I can see it. Some of them, obviously, I do catch. Can I create a small compost pile in an old plastic baby pool? We are renters, and I contain your garden for my patio. Just wondering since it's not being, yes, you can. You do want to make sure you put holes in the pool because if it rains and water gets in there, we were talking earlier about anaerobic stuff, you're just gonna, it's gonna become a smelly mess. So you need the water to drain out of it. You also would like some holes in it so worms can get in there and kind of break it down. It makes a difference. But you can certainly just do it in any kind of container really. Um, I mean, you can even know that you're a renter. Um, if you have the land space and you make a compost pile just out of wire and stuff and you throw in leaves, maybe you're not allowed to do it. But even if you did and you're going to move, you could just spread that compost out through the garden, throw down some grass seed and that would come back. But you can certainly use a pool. A month ago, I put alfalfa right onto my raised beds and watered it thoroughly. Will it have the same benefit if it doesn't go in? So the difference is, and that's a good question, when you're putting it into the compost tumbler like the video or you're using um, hydrated alfalfa in a compost pile, because it's green, you're mixing with browns, it heats up. It's going to break down much more quickly. So alfalfa that you just scatter from the bag is not giving a whole lot to your soil, but it's going to sit there and slowly it will be broken down by microbes, worms will eat it, and it will give back. And that's something you kind of just do regularly over the years and you just build up your soil that way. But it is slower than compost. It's not um, immediately effective in giving nutrients to the, to the plants, um, but it is something for the, the microbes and for the worms to chew on. Jeanette, I plan on planting garlic on the 29th and the weather is calling for rain the following three days. I think that'll be fine. Because remember, even if 
you had three days of great weather, at some point you're going to get three days of rain, you're going to get a week of rain. As long as your soil drains pretty well, that water's just going to kind of flow through and it will be okay. And when you're putting in your cloves like this, I mean, they're, they're not doing a whole lot. So for three days, it's just basically this clove sitting there and starting out. All right, let me just check to see if there's anything else I wanted to say about garlic. So a couple of things. This is, if you're just getting started, and you know, I don't have a place to order it specifically. I just look online for something on sale. It can be a little bit expensive, but this is the music variety. This is a hardneck variety. And this is kind of a tried and true, great starter garlic, smaller cloves, smaller bulbs, but it's just a garlic that seems to do well in most places. Another great garlic, and it's look how big these bulbs are. This is uh, German white. I did get this on Etsy. I like this guy because these are really large bulbs, which means these are German white. And this is, I mean, I'm not affiliated with them, but we'll give them a shout out. I've ordered the German white before and I end up with these small bulbs. Doesn't mean it's not German white, but when I'm paying money for something, I want to see the massive size of the German white bulb. So a good mix, music, German white, two different kinds, different sizes, kind of fun to grow. I've also grown the soft necks. Um, I don't have it here, but there's an Argentinian variety at my giant. And it's these really big cloves. It's a soft. Oh, wait, it is. It's this one. So this is the Argentinian soft neck. And it's big cloves. Nice size bulb for a soft neck. A lot of times we get the California white. It's smaller. It's in those netted bags. If you're buying it in a grocery store, you don't want the bottoms to be cut. You don't want the tops to be cut. You want it to look like this. You want to be buying full bulbs. And again, there's the roots. And they work perfectly fine meaning they're not sprayed with any, you know, toxic chemical or anything like that, and you can grow it. Jeanette, I plan on planting my garlic. Oh, wait, we did that one. All right, let's see. Let me reset the chat here. One second. All right, just fixing this. The, I've lost the chat for some reason. Almost fixed. All right. All right, things are working again. Yeah, when everything free, oh, a lot of questions came up. Hang on, hang on. All right, Mike, any rough idea on how many garlic bulbs per person per year? Um, no, I mean, it really does. I'm not trying to be funny, but it depends on how much you love garlic. So, I mean, I would kind of base it on that. Like my wife isn't a big fan of garlic. I love it. I grow more than I need. I give it away. But really, you know, in this piece of, uh, in this bulb with German white, there's eight cloves. That's going to make eight bulbs this size come this spring. So pretty quickly, you can end up with a lot. I mean, I feel like, you know, I mean, I would plan at least... I don't know, a dozen, two dozen cloves, that's enough garlic to kind of, you know, see how much your family likes it. But I'll be putting in probably a hundred cloves. Just make sure you guys put questions in front of it. Susie, yes, you can plant garlic now.
Tiny, which seeds do you need to buy annually? I know most seeds keep a few years, but I remember some don't germinate as well when they are left a year old. Sorry for... No, well, first of all, you're not off topic. So garlic is a theme. The questions can be really about anything you want with respect to vegetable gardening. Most seeds, if you keep them, are good for two, three, four, five, seven, even longer years. Keep them in the house, in a sealed container, Ziploc bag, Tupperware, even put them in a refrigerator. Um, lettuce seeds, I find, dry out. So every seed, I may not have this exactly right, but every seed has like a spot of moisture in it. And if it dries through, sometimes it's oil, so it just keeps it moist. If it dries out, then the seed's no longer viable. Lettuce seeds just tend to dry more quickly because of, of how they're designed. And sometimes you have to replace them. However, I would just, instead of putting, and I always recommend put two seeds into a, the ground so you're not waiting for a bad seed to germinate, put in two, maybe three. You could put in three or four lettuce seeds. You get so many in a pack and then just thin them down to one plant. But generally speaking, most seeds should be good for two years, unless they're sitting somewhere where they're dry, where they can dry out. Joshua, can I space rows of corn 18 inches apart with 12 inches apart within a row for good pollination? Garden bed is two and a half feet wide, 10 feet long. Let me just absorb that question. So just so you know, I plant my corn four inches apart in a square and I can fit like, I don't know, 64 plants in a four foot by four foot space. That's pretty tight. It means you have to really stay up on the watering and feeding because you have so much in one place. Yes, the you gave me dimensions that will work for growing your corn and will work for good pollination. But just keep in mind, I plant in a square. I have videos on it. And you see usually um, corn planted in a square or a big rectangle because they put the tassels up, they have pollen, the pollen has to fall down to the silks. If you have them in a tight row and the wind blows this way, all that pollen is going to be blown away. So you really want to try and, and keep it wide, like, you know, a good four feet wide. And when the pollen is coming off the tassels, give them a shake so that the pollen goes down through the plant. You know, your dimensions are fine. It's just if you do ever do like a single row and the wind blows this way, all the pollen's being blown away. So when you have it in a square or rectangle, the pollen from different you know, uh, corn stalks are blowing to the different silks and it, it makes a big difference. You know, and it's because your bed's two and a half feet wide. You know, I might want to have some more in there, but it's, it's possible. I mean, it's, they're going to grow. You just have to make sure that, and it could be just that couple of days when the pollen is ready to go, your wind is just blowing everything away from the silks of your corn. The one and only, the, this past spring I got what looked like black mites or black aphids on my garlic. It was nearly impossible to, to treat. I was cursing them every week, sometimes daily. What can I use? So I don't, I'm not familiar with them. Um... You know, when you get an infestation of something, that's when I like to use dusts. You can use organic dust like spinosad. I don't know if that works on mites. Seven dust is a chemical. It's effective, kills them out. Um, I don't feel like neem oil spray would work. I don't feel like if they were aphids, a soapy water and oil spray could work. Mites are pretty, they're, they're different. They're, you know, harder to treat. I manage spider mites on my cucumber plants by using peppermint oil. 
and I do sell that at my seed shop. You can connect to my seed shop through my page. You'll see um, the store up now. Uh, but peppermint oil irritates mites and it can repel mites. But I don't want to like sell you something that's not going to work. I'm not familiar. But what you're doing is the right process. You know that you've got them. They probably will come back. So you want to start treating early, like really early in the spring. Maybe it's the dust. Maybe it's the peppermint oil spray. But you want to pick your um, treatment and you just want to keep that going regularly. And you, and it is possible you kill them off, you kill off their life cycle, you get a lot, of, a lot less damage from them. All right. Heather, how much time before planting garden? Do... Let, me, let me clear this. Hold on. How much time before planting garlic do I separate cloves? Do you think soaking them is necessary? Some people soak them. I don't think it's uh, necessary because you're going to soak them when you put them into the ground, give them a nice water, watering basically. Um, this will all be separated the day when I'm sitting, you know, in the garden and putting them in the ground. So, you know, you can separate them whenever you want. It's a good idea if you're going to do the cold period, the vernalization period in the refrigerator, separate them, put them in a Ziploc bag, and just kind of let them go. So, Lori, um, that's a good question, and I don't know to be the answer. I've tried growing shallots before, and they were kind of expensive to buy, um, and I didn't get anything spectacular. But you're asking because when you buy it, a shallot it's like an it's a, like an oblong onion, and I don't know what they do. You know, it would make sense. You know that the growth would come from there and then you would get a bigger shallot, but I just don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I'm stumped. Maybe somebody else can help you with shallots. All right, hold on, I gotta catch up. So this is where it kind of gets busy. So again, Super Chats, I will pull your question right away. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep going like this. We are, oh, we're at almost 11.45, so we'll be finishing up in about 10 minutes. All right. Jen, I haven't been too successful with lavender. I know a bit also requires fertilization. What's a good time of year to try seeds in the ground for spring growth? Or is... So some seeds like a cold period. There's a chemical compound, don't ask me what it is, but they need to have a cold period, breaks that compound, the seeds germinate. So if you're gonna start lavender indoors or outdoors, it's great to take the seed pack, put it in your refrigerator for four weeks, give it that cold period. That just helps it with germination. If you're starting um, lavender indoors, don't over soak the starting mix germinates a little bit slowly, but it does take off. I start my lavender in January and it grows indoors 12 weeks or so before I put it outside. Gives it a little bit of a jump. It likes pretty well draining soil, so you don't want to put it into heavy clay or a place that has more shade. It really does like warmth, sun, and draining soil. If it's got great soil, it can take more shade and stuff like that, but you don't want a combination of shade heavy, damp soil. It just spells disaster for your lavender. Wanda, you can use store-bought store garlic to plant. I do it all the time. Sometimes if you go to the organic stores, you'll find different varieties of hardneck there. Um, a lot of times they don't necessarily have the name, so you don't know what you're growing. But I find that the Organic stores have a little bit more variety sometimes. Angela, I planted my garlic last fall in early November, but none of them got larger than marble size. Should I put some special kind of fertilizer in the soil? Well, let's, I'll talk about that briefly. So 
you don't need any special soil, um, special fertilizer, but you do want to make sure you have NP and K represented. So like compost itself is well below a 111 NP and K. And if you just have, you know, well composted garden soil, the plants slowly get what they need, slow and steady feeds them. You can put in, and I recommend any organic granular, whatever you want, scatter it across the top, mix it into that top four to six inches. Sometimes people use bone meal. They try and bring in more phosphorus. Bone meal does that, but it doesn't, it takes a while to break down. There's a little myth that if you use bone meal, you get all this phosphorus right away. You do over time. So you could make your planting bed where your garlic is going because it's a bulb. Phosphorus helps with that. You just up the phosphorus in there. If it was marble sized, I would maybe try a different variety, maybe maintain the watering a little bit more. But again, in spring, you could give it a nice drink of a water-soluble fertilizer. You could hit it again with the water-soluble fertilizer. So I don't think nutrition was really the issue. I'm not sure what happened. I mean, you need the consistent water come the spring. Sometimes a variety matters, like, you know, here's a really small clove here. In fact, this is the German white too. Like this is a company I send German white and this is what they sent me. That doesn't look like German white. This is German white. You know. So anyway, but some of the varieties that I know of are really small. They are like this, you know, not much bigger than my thumb. All right, how much time before planting garlic? Um, I, I think we did that one. Uh, Wanda, I answered this, but I'll answer it again. Can you plant store-bought garlic? Can you plant store-bought garlic to plant? And what should garlic? Um, I've not found anything it shouldn't be planted by. Some people have opinions, but I've put it all over my garden. I've used it to try and ward off insects. So I've mixed it with uh, brassicas. I've mixed it near peppers, uh, with my peas, by my tomatoes, and I've not had any issue with it. But you can definitely plant uh, store-bought gar garlic. Wendy, can you grow gar garlic in a green stalk? If so, how much? If so, how much would you mulch it? I have strictly container garden. So the pockets for the green stalks are like this. I would put a clove in far to the left, far to the right, or try and put in two just to get, you know, double your effort. They might be a little bit smaller. I mean, if you're doing bigger garlic, maybe just one. But I would still press it down. I mean, first of all, before you plant, put in a shovel, loosen it all up, handful of organic granular, get it all set up two inches deep. Um, the green stalks we really do take up pretty high, but you could just, you know, put some leaves right on top of it, pack them in there, and then just move them out of the way come the spring. You know, it's probably safe to say that, you know, maybe you don't even have to put the mulch down. Uh, Mama, this is like the question I just answered. I, I mean, so I have like garlic. I put down potatoes. I put down garlic. I have mustard greens. I have garlic growing through my mustard greens. I have them growing in my radishes. The reason I put potatoes down there is I'm doing an experiment to see how many levels I can grow different vegetables. Um, I don't necessarily recommend that because we'll, we'll see how the experiment goes. Um, in containers, I have a big container. I plant whatever I want in the center and I just put the garlic on the perimeter and you know mix it as I wish. You can plant garlic that you harvested if it stays intact, um, for sure. A lot of people do that. Um, and I'm going to try and do that more because it does get a little expensive. So I'm going to be planting, I'm going to be trying to store some of the uh, bigger German white that I can just grow in and then replant.
All right. We're going to wrap up shortly. I just got to find where I left off here. Lois, um, how much space do you use for your 100 garlic that you plant? So mine are good to go into containers and different beds in different places. Um, I mean, basically, I recommend if you want to get full cloves, you really want to plant them six inches apart. So, you know, wherever they would fit, really. So I don't know how to do the math, but one, two, three would be one foot and then six inches this way. So you can kind of figure it out that way. Um, but in a one foot strip, I'm putting three cloves of garlic and then I'm dropping six inches in one direction, another three, six inches, another three. Can I add a thick layer of green grass on top of garlic beds. So thick layer is the key, you know. Thick layer to me is like six or eight inches. You can put fresh green grass, maybe two inches, three inches. If you go past three inches really, it's gonna mat down, it's gonna smell, and it's gonna decay. So you wanna start with two or three inches, let the air get in, let it begin to brown out, dry out, and then if you want, you can add more grass on top of that. But I just wouldn't put more than three inches on the garlic bed yet. Well, I wouldn't put more than three inches on at once. And after that three inches kind of does its thing, you could put more later when that grass is more brown, or you can throw some leaves on top of it. How do you use the various dust to cover underneath leaves? Well, it's really hard. So dusts I use more for beetles that will climb across the leaves or I use them for chewing worms that will chew into it. Getting the underside of a leaf with dust is really hard. I usually spray insects that are under the leaves with soapy water, oil and soap, neem oil or peppermint oil because the sprayer is a lot easier to do it. I won't be doing, if you're asking uh, Tiny on a separation and planting a garlic, I have a lot of them, so I'm, I'm not gonna do it again, but you can just look up planting garlic. Munstead, Karen, is a good variety of lavender, M-U-N-S-T-E-A-D. I'll put my lavender, if I get it, usually in like December sometime, I plant in January. Where are we at? All right, I'm gonna stay on till 12 o'clock. That's eight more minutes. Sylvia, how often do you water your garlic after you plant it in containers? Well, now, once, and then if we're getting, you know, weird temps where it's getting in the 60s and 70s, and it looks like it's really dry, maybe again. But otherwise, I just let it go. Garlic is pretty solid. So, you know, you don't want the soil to dry out all the way through for several days. But that usually doesn't happen in the fall and winter. So one time, maybe if, if I was going to give you a number, you know, once a week, you know, through October, November, and then really December on, I'll, I'll probably let it go. Once it starts growing for the spring, you know, I'll start with giving it a great drink of uh, water-soluble fertilizer to wake it up, get it going. As it gets bigger, I water more often. When it's really thriving and big, you know, probably at least two times, if not three times a week, you're getting it the water. I, haven't, I don't really have any advice for beets. Um, and do beets require boron? Boron's a micronutrient. I mean, I think all plants might need boron, but it's not something that's typically lacking in our soil, so I wouldn't worry about it. If you're concerned about boron and other elements in your soil, I would get a soil test done first, and they will 
give you a report on what is in your soil. But when you're, you know, you have your main nutrients, sulfur, or I'm sorry, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and then you have calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. And then you have other micronutrients. Um, boron's probably a trace element. You don't need a lot of it. So I wouldn't recommend trying to add boron to a bed. Unless there's a soil test that says your soil is lacking and you need it. All right. Um, hello, do I have to separate the cloves and let them sprout and then plant them? Nope. You just get your bulb, you go to your wherever you're planting them, you break off a clove, push it into the ground. Um, I went over, if you missed the beginning of the video, how to plant it. Push it into the ground, water it in, and it, it will sprout and do its thing on its own. You don't have to wait for the green sprout. I garden in grow bags, and this fall added three small raised beds where radishes, arugula, mescaline, chard, kale are doing great. Can I plant garlic in a five-gallon grow bags? You can. Um, there's a chance that sometimes you could get weather that just deep freezes that container kills the garlic, but garlic is really, really hardy. So I would certainly give it a, um, I would give it a try. Five gallons, a little bit small, um, but depending on, it's gonna have enough space for the root growth. I would just fluff up the soil, throw in some handfuls of organic granular. I'd plant them probably four inches apart. You're gonna overcrowd them a little bit, water them in, and then see how it goes next year. So Laverne, strawberries are pretty much gone in Maryland. Um, it's not technically too late, but at this point, you're better off ordering um, strawberry plants. In the spring, you find a, a good dealer. I don't have one. You order your, your strawberry plants. They actually dig them up, wrap them. They've got nice root systems. You just plug them into wherever you want in the spring, and they will take off, and they can produce that year too. All right, we are going to wrap up in four minutes. Angela, what um, what company do you get your garlic from? Also, can I grow garlic in my green stock? Yep, um, you can definitely grow it in your green stock. I wouldn't put more than two cloves in a pocket for your green stock. I don't recommend a company, but I am giving these guys a shout out. Well, let's turn it the right way. This is a BJ Gourmet Garlic Farm. If you order from them, leave them a message that the uh, Rustin Garden sent them over there. I was really impressed by the size of their German white bulbs, and it's just a nice quality bulb. Um, German white's supposed to be really large, just like this. It's a hardneck variety. Um, and if I'm paying money, and I totally respect paying up for people that do this and harvest it, and they're putting their time and effort to provide it, I just want to get something beautiful. And this is just really, really nice. Hello, Diana. All right, 11.57, I'm to the end of the chat. If I missed your question, I apologize. You can throw it out there, but I'm gonna stay on. Might as well make it an even hour for another three minutes. And again, if you like this format, please check out the Perk memberships on my channel and join there. I do this format um, four or five times a month, I do two classroom, live classrooms, and I do a Grow As We Grow series where I take uh, people's video questions that are members and tours of their gardens, and I put them together into one video. The membership, the Perk membership is nice because it's just a small class of like 20 to 40 people, depending on what's going on. I can answer all your questions. It's a great way to learn. Um, not as good as in person, but at least with the chat going, um, you know, I can answer questions in real time. Diana, you can plant garlic now for sure. Um, you're very similar to Marilyn. You can plant garlic all the way through November, really. Rachel, thanks for listening to the podcast. I have another podcast um, that's going to be scheduled, and I just did one, the most recent one, and you can find the podcasts in any of my videos, you can link to them. Or you can find, just 
search the Rusted Garden Homestead podcast or Gary Polarchek podcast, it'll come up. But the one that is out now, the most recent one, is on market gardening. And it's a friend that I met over at Freetown Farm, and she had a market garden. So I'm learning how to grow plants and produce. I know how to grow it, but she's going to help me uh, teach me how to sell it in a market. I do recycle my container planting soil. I mean, I keep it in a container for two or three years, fluff it up, add in stuff, and then every two or three years, I dump it all out on a tarp. I add in compost, some peat moss, organic granular, fluff it all up, and I reuse it. You do not have to throw away your container soil every year. Cindy, if if your strawberry starts are solid, I would try and get them into the ground. Now, I just don't know where you are. I'm in Maryland. I have a little flower box. I always talk about this, maybe four inches wide, six inches deep. It freezes solid. It sits in the shade. My strawberries come back every time. They're okay. You could do that. You could leave them in the trays. I would just be concerned, you know, that they could die off. Slim chance. They're very hardy. They can take the freeze, but if you don't have to keep them in a tray, I would try and get them to where you want them to go. All right, we're going to call it a day. It is 12 o'clock. I will see you next time. I do the private, I'm sorry, I do the public garden grounds Q&A, what we're doing today, every second and fourth Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. You guys take care. Have a great week in your garden.